so you are a gamer but also a medical student how about in today's video we combine these two let's find out hey there i'm dr subhavram nani the guy who's mad about medicine just like you a recent graduate from yerevan state medical university and today in this video we'll be talking about simulations yes gaming and medical student combined together means clinical simulation i can say well this is not your native gaming on your xbox or playstation this is something which can give you some knowledge can help you build your concepts so what is this clinical simulation well without much further ado let me quit the talking and show you the screen and let's go through a case of clinical simulation and let's analyze how it can help us and i am on my prep ladder home screen and let me go to prepare and there we can see there's a new option of simulation so i have performed two simulations already and i've earned four stars so let me do the third one with you in real time so here it is a 72 year old male patient presented to the emergency department with strong pain in the chest with onset 6 hours previously so he is old age there is strong pain in the chest okay that's how he's presented he described this pain as stabbing radiating to the interscapular area and with no elevating factors he had a prior history of poorly controlled systemic arterial hypertension okay so this these are the risk factors dyslipidemia obesity and a 40 pack year smoking habit pulse is 90 respiratory rate is 22 slightly above slightly above bp is 180 by 120 so this patient is hypertensive temperature is 98 degrees so not febrile general examination acutely ill right lower limb with all pulses palpable left lower limb with weak femoral pulse okay uh, all other systems examination are unremarkable investigations uh, definitely we will perform an ECG and it is normal sinus rhythm with non-specific ST deviation okay uh, should we perform a chest x-ray I think we should first get a D-dimer D-dimer is negative so we can rule out any throm or anything uh, if we do a trans esophageal echocardiography yes we have a dissection flap true and false lumen in the ascending iota okay uh, I think if we get a CT or a chest x-ray I think we can get a chest x-ray and mild mediastinal widening so I don't think so we need a CT from the presentation I think it is iotic dissection because there is a stabbing radiating pain uh, radiating to the interscapular area so radiating towards the back and on investigations on chest x-ray we found there is mild mediastinal widening d-dimer is negative so there should not be any thrombs and yeah and we found the uh, true and false flaps of the ascending iota so i'm pretty confident it is iotic dissection so let's just go to the management and uh, so iotic dissection as far as i know stanford type a and b the B1 requires surgical correction, A1 is all only I think beta blockers and O2. So is there any investigation which tells us uh, is it the ascending or the uh, uh, is it the it is ascending but is it before the aortic isthmus or after. So Stanford type A mm, in the S. Yeah, should we perform the CT scan? Uh, I think with the CT scan we can know uh, the area. So yes, aortic dissection type A. Okay, so we found it is type A. So type A does not need surgical operation. So we can just go to management. We can select beta blockers. Cardioversion is not needed as we know it was normal sinus rhythm as yeah. Cardioversion is not needed 
bed rest is an emergent surgical correction is not needed so let's finish this case and let's see how have we performed we have done earned four stars so we performed all these investigations and all of these investigations were needed to be performed so we were right there emergent surgical correction not performed which is wrong and bed rest is performed which is wrong okay so this is our things i have made some mistakes it is a surgical emergency so, so it looks like i confused these two type a and type b so type b requires surgical emergency uh, type a requires surgical emergency and type b does not require surgical emergency okay so i was wrong about that and i am allowed to make mistakes because this is just a simulation and we can go ahead and jump on the next module or we can play it again and that's it so that was a great example of a clinical simulation case so let me get straight to it why is it necessary actually it's not necessary why would you want to do a clinical simulation so let's say you're a medical student you don't have much exposure to clinical cases you're not going to the hospitals much especially due to covid these days or you're just a foreign medical student who is not able to interact with the patients because of a language barrier or whatever the reasons is well why did i say it is more like gaming because see in gaming you have these flight simulator you have i don't know tractor simulator farmer simulator you even have goat simulator so for medical students this is like a clinical simulation and that's how it is named so as a medical student you put yourself or even as a doctor you put yourself in this case that this is your patient you have to analyze what is wrong with this patient you have to order tests and then you also have to choose a treatment plan and this will help in your critical thinking and analysis and help you understand the concept you are studying better and also maybe get an idea on how the clinic works the best thing is you are allowed to make mistakes you do not have to be perfect in this case this is just a simulation so you make mistakes here it will not harm the patient it is just a simulation you will get to learn from these mistakes because if you make mistakes you will realize that okay i was wrong this time i do not have to repeat it the next time and this is how you learn you make mistakes and you learn so this clinical simulation will be really helpful in that you analyze you order tests you choose a treatment plan you get the feedback okay this test was not really needed but i still performed it this treatment in the treatment plan this drug was not really needed i still gave this drug or something like that you will analyze yourself based on the results on the feedback and then you can get to the next case and maybe perform better and you can see there are different systems cardio renal respiratory psych cns and what all so you can put yourself in that position how is it like being a cardiologist getting a patient of a heart disease or even in the emergency ward how is it how does it feel like in a simulation setting you're not really there but you can feel it that the patient comes to you and presents with this and you have to order this test you have to choose this treatment plan so this is a good simulation i would say i would do it basically when i am not doing anything else like i would prefer to do it on my sofa in my bed because this feels like a game as i said it is gaming and you know your medical student part of your life combined so it feels like a game it is light on the head you are allowed to make mistakes you are allowed to learn from your mistakes and that's the best part so how can you improve on your mistakes where this is where the instant feedback comes in so as you can see there is a feedback option or a full reasoning of the case that why the patient presented that way and not the other way why is this treatment needed and not this treatment or why was this te test ordered and why wasn't this test ordered so you get a whole reasoning everything about the disease in this instant feedback and you can analyze yourself where did you went wrong or where could you have been more correct where did you miss this finding was this finding even necessary to for the treatment plan 
did you even need this diagnosis test or something like that so it is uh, it really puts you in this clinical scenario and helps you uh, increase your diagnostic skills so i would really love to use it when i'm studying internal medicine especially because medicine you have a vast variety of cases you have all these systems and when the patient presents you don't know actually what system this this patient's disease related to so this clinical simulation will really help in the diagnosis skills especially in medicine and i can see myself you know having playing this simulation and putting myself in that scenario and really treating the patient as if this is my patient and i'm allowed to do mistakes because this is just a simulation and i can learn from these mistakes so that is the whole concept about the simulation and to be honest i don't really see anything they could add in this update because first of all it's a free update if you have the prep ladder subscription you get this free update and it's a fun update i would say it is not necessary for you to crack uh, the exam it is not a necessary update i would say it is more like an addition i would say like uh, for the qbank update for the videos update i feel those are necessary you need to know the latest information you need to know the latest question pattern but about this you do not need to put yourself in a simulation but if you could why not so this update i think just generalizes that that you put yourself in a clinical simulation try out what is it like having a patient and especially in this covid times where you just hear about covid cases and you're starting to forget the normal cases where the patient presents with back pain or chest pain or something like that the everyday cases i think this simulation is great for that and as i said not necessary but a fun and addition update which i would love to use maybe when i'm sitting on my sofa or in my bed and that's about it if you like this video click the thumbs up button and if you would like to see more reviews or just more content about med school life or my journey don't forget to subscribe and follow me on instagram and as always stay healthy stay safe and stay mad but just about medicine